Hey there, it's KV, and this is the Moon Phase Report for the new moon coming on the 30th of January. Um, I'm actually doing one of these at night. I'm kind of uh, doing things a little different. Um, normally at night I have no energy and I uh, are just like, yeah, once the sun goes down I turn into a different person and um, uh, I go into like just wanting to daydream or use my mind and my creative abilities to manifest through visualization. <laughs> That's how I spend my nights. <laughs> um, but I just, I got the, I have no idea too, I have zero idea what I'm going to talk about. Um, but I just was like, do it now. So we'll see how this goes. Um, one of the things I just drew up the chart and what I love, <laughs> and I think I noticed this last year too, and that's why I was like, I can't wait. But it's uh, that the sun and the moon are at 11 degrees Aquarius. Um, and the reason I love that is because 11 is Aquarius. And even the word Aquarius, I think so much looks like the number 11. Like everything with 11 and Aquarius and the Aquarius symbol are so like in absolute alignment with each other, <laughs> you know? So um, I thought that was really cute. And then Mercury is in the very last degree of Aquarius, so it'll be shifting into Pisces the very next day. So um, that's pretty huge. And then on top of it, you know, this Venus uh, retrograde is going to be going direct the day after. So it's really kind of profound like that, actually. Um, you know, because this Venus in Capricorn, this one has hit everybody, <laughs> you know. This is the one, you know, that's why for the past, you know, two months of these, all I've been doing is talking about values because our value system are, and mostly like how we value ourselves. So mostly like how we think of ourselves, how we interpret ourselves, um, has really been, has really been coming to the picture for us to really kind of see and reevaluate what kind of energy we're putting out there because what we're, you know, feeling about ourself is what we're putting out there. You know, just like that thing, if you say, nobody's ever going to love me, it makes, you know, holding that kind of energetic position makes it really difficult for <laughs> people to get to you, you know. By saying something like that, you put up these um, energetic, invisible barriers around you, but it affects other people so if you're saying something like that something does keep them from loving you or coming for you or um, wanting to be with you or not even wanting to be with you but actually doing it actually coming to you and asking you out or something you know so there's all these things that we are so awakening to and I feel I guess this is going to be like a repeat video of all of them right now because it's the same things it's about valuing ourselves, and it's about what we're saying with our words and what we're putting out there uh, that is then coming back to manifest to us. So um, with this one, you know, with the values one and having it in Capricorn, it was funny because like a week ago, uh, I don't even remember what it was, but that was like the first in a series of a really sensitive space that I have moved into. <laughs> um, uh, and I know a lot of people too are having some really big tests and trials and things thrown their way to see how they can handle it. But I just had this day and I don't even remember anything that could have even provoked it. Oh yeah, now I do remember what provoked it. But still it was something that would have normally not phased me at all. And it, it was something that was being repeated and, um, it started to phase me and then on this one moment it just really phased me and totally opened the these doors to this wound that I've had from childhood and um, and that's funny even like saying those words brought um, the feeling of tears coming out even though I don't feel like they're coming out it just was that feeling of saying the words and uh, so anyway it, it totally you know it, it totally exposed my wound and it was something that kept getting pressed so I finally just was like completely sensitive about it and 
for me and for what a lot of people are having because of the, you know, Venus and Capricorn is that I didn't feel important and I didn't feel like anybody sees me as important and I didn't feel like anybody loved me and I didn't feel like, and I felt like I was second best or, you know, third class citizen or, you know, I had all that stuff come up all into one of not being good enough, not being seen as important, not being valued. Um, and like whatever you know about who I am and it had me so sensitive I, I but but so anyway so I put a post up on Facebook I expressed it all in there when it was still coming out of me because I really do love to do that uh, uh, I love to be really real and raw and honest and any opportunity I have to show you me to show you me when I am in a fall and the opportunity I have to expose myself when I am feeling vulnerable or wounded or sensitive or um, anything like that, I always love to share that. <laughs> That'll be the first thing. I'll, like even now, probably I'm not really feeling too hot, which that's probably why I was like, let's start recording. <laughs> Something nice and juicy and embarrassing might come up. <laughs> And I'm not kidding you about that. I don't know what that is. I really just, it's like, you know, you know what? I actually, you know, I, I'm going to start doing this in the class I'm teaching, but I'm going to start like explaining things with a chart sitting there. But even with mine, uh, my, um, <laughs> this is, oops, cowboy. Um, this is, uh, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, so I think the ultimate ultimate reason for it is that my Mars is in the last degree of Sagittarius so I really do like to show that truth in its fullest capacity and to me you know I was always you know growing up really sensitive of people who couldn't share things or couldn't apologize or couldn't cry or couldn't share that you were ever in a bad mood or couldn't share that bad things happened to you and and I love that stuff like I love hearing it from people and I also love um, sharing it myself <laughs> you know so any opportunity to so yeah of course so I raced to Facebook to let everybody know that I was not feeling important which later when I was talking to my friend I said you know it was like 10 sentences is what I expressed it in but I was really just saying does anybody love me <laughs> The post was really just saying, does anybody love me? And can somebody please come forward now and please just tell me that they love me because I feel like crap and I feel worthless. And so, um, yeah. And um, one thing too I always love about that is because I have just figured out that 100% of the time, any time I share those vulnerabilities, I feel so much better. Like it's just the sharing of it. It's just the like sharing of being human that like kind of lights me up with that kind of stuff. And I know that others too, when they share it, they say the same thing. It's very rare that we share it and then we actually stay in it. Something about the sharing it is what transforms it into something that is, you know, kind of not such a warped position. Because when we're speaking from our wounds, we're speaking from a kind of warped mirror position. You know, it's like, you know, like those body mirrors where they're all warped, sticking out these places and shrinking in these places. It's like when we're talking from our wounds, we're always talking from that circus mirror, you know. So I think that there's really something important in sharing that. And um, by doing that, you do just kind of naturally step back from it and go, well, you know, I know that was kind of silly. Like I was just being really sensitive. And it was also funny too, because it was at the, you know, it was around the full moon actually when I did it. And I was like, that's so funny because that's what I put in the last video about not being so sensitive or not necessarily not being so sensitive, but keeping the door open to the fact that we are going to magnetize things that we're not seeing correctly and that we're being very sensitive about, even though the other person does not intend it at all. So that was what the thing was with me and the other people were not intending it at all. And they were only kind of saying this because of these other things things and there was a lot to it but still it was completely a hundred percent on me there was no truth to it <laughs> there was no harm that was coming my way it was just me 
having my wounds accessed through something that was happening currently and me getting all worked up about how nobody loves me and nothing I do is important and I might as well just stop it all because nobody cares and nobody's here and <laughs> you know but so um so that's that Venus speaking though and that's that Venus especially speaking in Capricorn you know um at least if you're having the one with you know m what I'm doing is not important I guess you know so combining that with the self-worth. So all these things individually have been coming up for us over these past several weeks. And, you know, there's been a lot of, I know there's been a lot of waves to it with some really kind of intense feelings for a lot of people, but it really kind of just depends on what was coming up out of you. But I can tell you that, um, you know, this one was coming up for a really uh, good reason as it pertains to the future you are walking into and into this more powerful kind of you know in this kind of more powerful and fully self-directed motion in your life so we are all really like ha having the gumption to like follow our paths fully follow our dreams fully follow uh, any kind of thing that's pulling us whether it's a love partner whether it's a moving situation whether it's a changing job situation whether it's an expansion situation whatever it is um, clearing out that density of those wounds and the, the wounds that relate to self-worth value um, 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 and then combining with Capricorn anything like needing to feel important or needing to prove yourself to others that's the one I can't forget to talk about our um, others approval Others approval. That's why I'm so glad I remembered that because I didn't have time for it in the last video. I'm remembering that. So if it was coming from your wound is something of needing approval or, you know, even like feeling judged because you need their approval, that could be a big part of it. And the things that were coming up, if you can just be really real with them and if you can just like you know go honestly in them without like I'm always saying now without playing the blame game without always putting always it's always somebody else's fault you know we just so naturally attack like that we so want to hurt like that and it really is never you know it's kind of like me getting sensitive about that thing when none of the people intended it <laughs> and and um um, I just was reading it wrong because I already had this wound. If I didn't have that wound, none of those things would have triggered it, you know? So we have to get really honest and real about these things that trigger us. And like I've been saying for weeks, like putting the mirror on us. What does this mean about us? What, what does this, what does the message that this has about us? What do we need to change about us? And not any more of this, you know but because of them, because they did that. You know, even that's, you know, when you think about our childhoods, what are, what do our wounds come from, you know? They're coming from other people, and we've not known how to deal with them, so there was this blame game that kind of came about with that, and it's really about us finding those ways to, like, let them go, <laughs> you know? Let this, this big tie to them that relates to like needing their approval, needing to be a good boy or a good girl, um, needing to be valued by your parents and, you know, and honored and loved. And, um, and uh, we've had a lot of, uh, I mean, one of the things that can always help you not do the blame game is that we're only really in this kind of land of consciousness that we are in that we do remember things and they do imprint us you know from childhood you know and like back then they didn't think that you know it was like they're gonna forget they're not gonna know this doesn't matter it's a kid I don't remember what I was like when I was a kid so they're not gonna remember this either and they're not gonna tell and it doesn't really matter and and you know and then thinking so much about like you know not having birth control or I don't know was there birth control but, you know, have being younger parents, you know, and like not really knowing yourself yet and not really figuring out who you are and not feeling like you've, you know, lived enough of your life yet. So like, and then to be a parent, it's already going to make it where they're not able to give enough to that kid. It's like a fact. It's like something that's just going to happen. So, 
you know why can why do we choose to still hold on to these things and blame them or have you know uh, these uh, these 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 um you know like these walls of resistance uh, that we're keeping up around ourselves because of them um, and that's what's kind of transforming out of us, you know, even if we don't consciously know that we're working on it, we are. <laughs> and it's the job of it is becoming easier in the way that um, uh, just like these little insights of things can open you so much quicker to seeing what you've been holding on to that's holding you back. and. Um, uh, we can just like get this stuff a lot more also because we're so eager to heal, right? We're so like, we want to heal. We want to do our inner work. We want to look within. We want to be the best peoples we can be. We want to feel good about everything we say, think and do, right? We want to, you know, so that right there, having that passion, you know, is what can really kind of make our lives a lot different right now with in regards to healing our wounds and 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 like and for good and and like you know in the sense of like letting it go it didn't matter whatever i'm not going to let this define my life you know and define who i am and putting that energy out into the world you know so that's been the magic of venus retrograde so you know, from this point on, if you can look back and see kind of like what areas you you were were coming up to your attention, what areas were you working on, what were the feelings that were coming up, and and knowing that um, in each one of those you took leaps forward just by feeling it and spending time with it and being open to it and being open to the message and you know seeing these things about yourself that maybe you couldn't see before so um, that's awesome and um, that's the greatest news ever and um, and I understand that like you made more headway in just being in the space of them than you could at other times in your life and that's where like the Venus and the Jupiter were working together in the Cancer in the Capricorn um, to really kind of open you to these things and to show you you know um, on the end tail of this is um, then to show you the warning signs and I think I talked about that on the last one I can't remember but um, warning signs have been coming up a lot more to me in in a lot of ways but um, you know really kind of we, we really do have to switch our um, way of looking at warning signs as uh, something that is saying it's definitely going to happen you know the warning sign is coming to let you know that you have to make great big changes in your life and what we're now taking from this experience that we just had with the Venus retrograde is that now the warning signs are coming to us of where we need to change and where we need to change right now you know and um, I even went into a huge rabbit hole with all like every because I've been so sick and um, I've had a lot of other things too that I'll tell you in a minute but I've had I've had more downtime now than I have like all year <laughs> I've had more downtime in January than I have in all of December <laughs> and uh, uh, so I've gotten to catch up on all the proper right action documentaries out there and I've learned so much and I've gone to places that have frightened me I went too deep into some but then I was able to come out higher in these other ones so at least I'm at some kind of a balance point with them but uh, there's lots of warning signs going on in our environment and uh, that that's the biggest one ones that we're having in our life are outside of us but they relate to us because they relate to needing us to own our self-worth and value who we are so that we can own our power and actually do something out in the world to um, stop 
some of these warning signs that are like we don't realize it but there's actually like fire alarms like if you could imagine every house every apartment every building that has a fire alarm imagine it going off and that's kind of what is going on <laughs> and um, but we can't hear it but you can in your belly a lot of people they can feel it in their belly they're like something's up something's up and and it is and it's these warning signs but um, when we value ourselves, and when we feel self-worth for ourself and when we're owning our power we're these very much more determined and confident human beings and when we have that power with us we're much more conscious about what we can do in the world and when we're when we don't have self-worth and when we don't feel the self-value we're more inside of our bodies picking on ourselves you know when we don't have the self-value we're like constantly reminding ourselves inside about how deficient and not good enough and never going to be able to do this and negative 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 we beat ourselves up major when we don't have self-value and when we're so focused inside like that we're not realizing what's going on out in the world you know and, and we and we can't it's kind of like that thing how you have to take care of yourself before you can take care of someone else it's that in the in the in the airplane you got to put your air mask on first and then you help others with theirs and um, that's the fact of us needing that's what we need to to kind of write some of these things in the world whatever ones we can at this point but um, they can't come from the beings who do not have self-value and who do not have self-worth and that power within um, kind of knowing who they are and so that's what the planets have been doing and the planets have been working on showing you where you do not value yourself and where you do not know how fucking brilliant and awesome and incredible you are and you know kind of showing you back in those days of when this first started because it started with us needing approval from others and we needed the approval of our parents you know and then it became friends and kids and and then growing up and then it was this and professors and da 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 and it's like we're always needing approval and um and uh but it started from the beginning times and if you can just go back to those beginning times and you know whatever it takes to kind of remember that like none of those things that were so hurtful and cut to the bone and and um really just changed things for you those really weren't important <laughs> um, and and they weren't so important that your whole life now is a manifestation of them of not feeling important or not feeling loved or not feeling good enough or not feeling pretty enough or not feeling like you have a nice enough body or not feeling like you had enough money you know all those Venus things uh, that's where they we kind of like took on all these things and um, and now have like held ourselves back in life because of it so the process now and there's still more to it you know we're not there yet but but understand that the layers there there's this work being done on all of us every one of us and um, <laughs> and it's uh, and that was like a hell yeah that book being pulled off my leg um, I don't even remember what I said now though um, oh there's work being done in all of us like we're all going through this this process and it's something that's because um, it requires us in the picture but there's other forces kind of working with this and the part of us is the part where we are being given these opportunities to be provoked to be hurt to be pissed to be sad to be depressed to be to think we're that we're losers um, we're being given those opportunities and all we really are being asked to do is just sit in it you know and the uh, the work is being done with it but if we can just sit in it and look at it and see it and like with me I'm always saying and then eventually like laugh at it because you're like I bought into that you know it's so like what 
I can't even believe, you know, so there, 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 there does need to be that like, then like laughing at it, you know, cause you know, just to even think that somebody could say something to you. So, you know, remember that's why I told you, cause like when in my, um, in my high school days, what manifested out of me was like a really mean and vicious and hurtful and like I tortured people. I can still have flashbacks when I say that of people I just scared the shit out of. You know, like I scared them hardcore and I would never have done anything because I was still like, you know, the same softy I am inside. But I do have a badass side to me. Like I always say like nobody could get away with um, like mugging me or trying to take me or trying to harm me because like I have something that I can show it's because of that uh, that mafia aspect in my chart. Um, so everybody who has Mercury and Pluto together, but especially if you add Mars, you can do this too. But they, they you can have a look that will scare anybody. <laughs> um, yeah, so I would do that kind of thing to these poor little kids. And um, but I've always just hoped like that none of them. Um, held on to that and let that shape anything in their life you know like that's what most gets me because it's like I know how this is something we've done we've let one thing happen and it shaped everything else in our life one person person told us one thing and we've let it shape our whole lives you know and um so the 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 work is being done right now to really kind of just make this as easy as possible on us is what I just heard um, so that's why it's like it is coming up these things that we took on as our own but they really had nothing to do with us and they had nothing to do with what we're here to do well they may have um, that could be part of your work but they still aren't supposed to be we're not supposed to be tagging them still along we're not supposed to be hauling them still along in these big backpacks of heavy dense weight so they are coming to us and the work is being done to kind of dissipate their power in our bodies and then bit by bit we're just all going to really 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 start changing and morphing into different things and things that are much more us you know and much more who we are as a pure thing as a puritan <laughs> as this pure thing without the wrong things that were sticking to us that we then just took on as our own so like implants I guess right so we're just kind of those are falling away so it's really cool but do just be patient with <laughs> none of this um, what we're working for is the part that feels really good but um, you know this is it, it has to bring up it up as a wound so it has to be uncomfortable you know it's gonna might as well plan on that one so with that just at least be stoked when something does come up and be like you know I'm getting so much from this reading even because um, I was not feeling good at all but I haven't I haven't been feeling good for like um, for a lot of days but I am um, one thing so everybody's gonna be getting wake-up calls that are really strong about things that they absolutely have to change in their life and it's with things that we were not thinking of as important we were not thinking of it as that big of a deal or something like that it'll it'll be unique to us um, but the the cool thing is is the warning sign is going to come to us and the energy to um, do it and change it right now is going to be a hundred percent in each one of us there's going to be something where we are just suddenly like I'm going to do it I can do it I will change this I'm going to you know whether it's like if you've never been happy with your body you're all of a sudden going to be like I know exactly what I'm going to do I'm going to start doing that and, da, 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 da. and if you've always wanted to pursue this career but you could never believe in it and da 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 you're going to be like I am going to put my everything into that and I'm going to da 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 and then if you want to like I want to whatever whatever you want to heal and make right and make better and do you're gonna have the energy to do it so whatever the warning sign that you're gonna get at least <laughs> it's gonna be easy to execute so it's all perfect but the warning sign will hit you like loud and clear and you will know and you will have to make the changes but fortunately you know you will have the um, you'll have the energy to change it and you will be 
like, I'm going to do this. Yay. So that's a cool bonus of it. So there's so much going on, right? And it's, um, it's fantastic. And it's all just, you know, more and more, um, uh, more and more just getting us pure and like, like really for real, like living it and doing it and being it. And that's what I've been saying now. Cause, um, one thing besides these past weird days and they're not weird. I have every right to feel this way. Um, but, um, before that in the, in my, uh, moon journeys class, I had been talking about, you know, cause I'm showing them how to live this way so that things don't really affect you anymore. <laughs> like, you know, when they're coming, you know, how long they're going to last, you know, what message you know, what kind of messages they have. And something about kind of knowing that makes it so much easier to live life because you're, I realized that the other day I was like, it's just that we don't know what's going to happen is what freaks us out in life we don't know what's going to happen next or we don't know how long this is going to last this is what we have you know so those are the things that always freak us out and uh and uh so anyway i show this way to dissipate all that to really kind of have this kind of even road of like you you after you do this for several months especially you're just like in this flow it's all kind of good you don't know what day it is you don't know it's just like it's all good there's no like uh you know and like uh oh and i don't know what's and, and uncertainty so much of the uncertainty that you have in life you just kind of lose it you don't you know, and I was saying, I've been like this because I've been doing it, you know, for over a year now, this thing I'm teaching. And um, I, uh, I I feel like nothing rocks me. I feel like I just go along and flow and it's da da da. And it's and, and, and nothing inside of me is important. You know, it's all like I'm not even concerned with anything. It's like, what again? Da 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 da. And um, so it's a really nice feeling. <laughs> Um, it's really nice to feel that way, but that's kind of as a whole, you know, with everything that's happening now, everything that's leaving us now, everything that's really aligning solidly in us now, because our truth, you know, the more things we're letting go of seeing through, um, and accepting, uh, are just making us like, so that we'll walk different, you know, we'll talk different, we'll look different, we'll move different. Um, Something's just going to shift us. And then when you get in it, you're going to be like, oh my God, it feels so comfortable to wear me, <laughs> you know, like, wow, how awesome does it feel to feel just me? Cause it's different, you know, um, it's different than when that stuff that isn't you, cause the solid you is just like, it's just, it's just, a, it's, you know, it's actually a really dense feeling, but it's a good dense feeling, you know, it's a solid, <laughs> it's like you're there. So you don't think about it. Um, but yeah, so let's see, I'm actually going to, uh, do, I don't know if you got to read them last time, but I did, um, what I did for the horoscopes and I'm going to be having a lot more time to write because I'm, I'm hiring my first employees. <laughs> I'm so happy. The first day of Aquarius, the first day that the sun was in Aquarius of 2014, which you already know, this is going to be the year, yo, you know, like this is the year. So like, yeah, so the first day of Aquarius, and that was the day that all this team of peoples came my way. Like all of a sudden it was like, this is my in-house assistant. This person's helping me with this. This person's helping me with that, that with this. And then all these things came together. So it was so, so I thought that was so cute that it happened on the first day of Aquarius. And my place is called Aquarius Nation. Even though I'm not an Aquarius, you might think so because I, everybody thinks so because I call it Aquarius Nation. But I don't know if I ever told you that, but, um, and you, but the Aquarius Nation is the people who are bringing in the age of Aquarius. Like if you're some, if you're a forerunner, if you're like someone who is like, you know, ahead and pioneering and powerful and creative and alive and awake and conscious, you know, you are someone bringing in the age of Aquarius. And those people are, peoples are called the Aquarius nation. 
so we are all the Aquarius nation. So I loved that it was the first day of Aquarius and uh, my team finally came together so in, in perfect timing because I'm like collapsing. I need help. But um, it's also too because I want to work on all these other things. You know, I want to write all these things. I want to express all these things and and um, and um, and yeah. Um, but so, see, I was going to tell something and then I was like, I don't think I'm supposed to tell that or in my, in my mind thinks I'm not supposed to tell that. But then I almost told it earlier and then my mind said, no, 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 you're not supposed to tell that. And then, um, and it just came again, like, well, you're supposed to tell that. And I'm like, no, I'm not supposed to tell that though. Right. So that's why I was pausing there. <laughs> I don't know how long it was. Um, Um, do I have to tell that? Uh, I almost feel like I have to now because you're so curious. Or how could you not be? <laughs> um, okay, so, all right, you know, I'll just tell it. I don't see, I didn't see the point in it. That's why I was like, I don't know what I have to, why I have to tell it. But maybe I will, there will be a point at the end because I never know why I'm going to say anything. And then I say it and there's a point at the end. So let me trust this. So, um, um, so, so I think I know, I, I told you guys that, uh, uh, I was told, you know, that's how I like to say it or stuff like that. But sometimes I'm always like, I am put on, a, I'm put on assignment. I'm put on alert that something is really big changing in my life. Like, um, when I was living in, um, when I had to go back and get to know my dad, you know, that was something that was told me. And then, um, and then when I was living in Oakland and I was told in two months, you're moving to a place with better air. And in two months on the day, I end up in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And, um, so I, I'm always like told these things and then they, and I don't, I never know, you know, I'm like, I don't know if that's really going to happen, but it always does. <laughs> and then I'm there and it's always effortless. And so I trust everything that comes through me like that. Cause it's only like, I'll get messages like that sometimes. And, um, so anyway, I was told that I was leaving in May and I was, um, that seems, remember, I think I told you on here, I thought that was way too early to be leaving because I really love where I live, but I do really want to get to a place that has a government that loves its peoples and wants to, and supports its peoples and wants to support the earth. And, um, like, I just know that if I'm going to have somebody controlling me, I need to be in a place where I approve of that kind of control because I am manifesting my life, right? And uh, I can have whatever I want, right? Um, so for me, like, I have been thinking that a lot, that I, I want to be in a country that supports me and not like cutting food stamps and cutting unemployment and then but putting money into military. Like, that kind of stuff is really hard for me to take because I have such a strong <laughs> uh, uh, vision of everything that is not of right action. <laughs> and so it's difficult for me. And I'm like, if I stay here, it'll be difficult on me, you know? Um, so anyway, so I was like, May, gosh, that's so soon though. But okay, you know, I'll roll with it. And, um, and then the other day, I was actually told that I got my warning sign and I was told that if I don't change all these things in my life, that thing in May is actually me leaving the earth and dying. And I had it laid out. And what's funny too is that it's all about the working though. It's because I've been working too much. I've been working morning till night every single day unless I have like a migraine. It's just there's so much to keep up with. And, and I'm not even taking most of the opportunities coming my way. I can't. You know, I'm like, I can't. I can't afford to get bigger <laughs> because I'm so busy now, you know. So it's like I'm not even taking opportunities and I'm going, 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 going. But anyway, so I was told that it's actually damaging my health. And if I don't change, and it is how it was put as of tomorrow, which was 122, um, that I, that, that May thing could be me dying. 
And um, um, so then I get, but that's what it was so cool because like everything that was coming through about you need to start doing this, you need to start doing that, you can't do any of that anymore, uh uh, zero, um, and that, that, that. And it was just a whole new lifestyle plan. And I was like, cool, I love this. This is so fun. You know, so the, the passion to change it was, um, you know, clear as day. And then, so I haven't even really done any work since then. I just was like, I instantly pulled back. I was like, I got to clean my house. I got to like do these other things. I got to like, you know, I've been catching up on, oh, I, I ended up getting so in these awesome wrestling movies. And I know you would never guess that from me, but listen a little further. They're like, well, one of them was with these wrestlers, and they're were they from like the 40s to 60s or something? What was it called? Lipstick and lipstick and lipstick and barbed wire or something like that. Lipstick and dynamite. Lipstick and dynamite. I really liked that. And um, and then glow, and then and they really had really big messages at the end. They were the ones that like at the end you're like crying and like oh my god so they had really good messages and then also and then the last one was on Mick Folly which that one I can't believe I could even have watched that whole movie I had to cover my eyes and cover my ears a lot but um, profound message at the end every one of those had such a profound message at the end and they were wrestling which you'd never even find me in that world ever giving it an ounce of my attention and here I'm watching three wrestling movies in a row but so that's how I spent my first wow that's so fascinating too I just got that too um, I just got a really big message about that too um, um, wow um, but um, so yeah so I got the warning and then um, the full on this is what you got to do and then i had the full and i i've had the full on okay got to do this got to make these changes and can't work so much and need to do these other things with my time and have to give responsibilities away which all these people showed up so it's perfect timing they showed up like the day before actually <laughs> i got my warning sign that's funny so I have to like relax a lot more or, you know, and it, what's funny too is before I started my business, I was like spending years in a hammock smoking pot, you know, I've been doing nothing <laughs> for years. <laughs> I've been just enjoying the ride for years, being a Pisces in the truest form. And then I went into Cap Capricorn and just got busy and went haywire with it. So now I had to stop doing all the work aspect of it so much which is good but anyway so I think that's um, I think that's pretty fascinating so yeah that's the story that then I was just forced to tell you and I'm wondering what that point was oh I bet that point was because of that image that was given to me which I did not tell you uh, what I got about those movies I think I had to say it here to <laughs> to get the true point of what those movies messages were giving to me because there was a message for me and for that um, okay, cool. Oh, so um, I don't know if I told you, but on the last uh, video, I wrote a little horoscope for each sign. And I didn't even look at the chart. I just said, what does this person, what do, what do Aries need to hear for January? <laughs> and then just um, something came out. And they were really profound and special and different. And I had no part in them. I didn't even have like... I was only the pen. I had zero part. I wasn't thinking about other. I wasn't thinking about friends that have them. I wasn't thinking about it at all. It was just these things came out. And I thought they were kind of really special. And um, so I'm going to do that again for the new moon. And then I'm going to have those on Aquarius Nation. So I haven't done those yet, but I'll have the link down below. Um, so you can go read that too. And a more like just a message. You know, we just need like a message now. Even this, I wanted to keep it shorter. And I'm doing that. Good. Um, but I did have one more. Oh, yeah. And then so many events going on this week. Um, twenty On the 28th, we have the distance healing. This time it's going to be a clearing call. It's either going to be a clearing call or an activation call. So this one is really perfect. This could really help with what we're releasing right now, too, actually. It would be a really good move to join into that. So do that, and then they can clear it. Um, and then two days later, I believe Tara is doing a shamanic journey 
um, and then two days later <laughs> so it's probably there's power right now because we all came forward to have our things and they just happened to be all together and then so two days after the shamanic journey me and Reverend Eva are doing the um, are doing the spree cast the first of the month thing again yay and um, this time I better have power <laughs> I mean I better have sound we just done a sound check too that's why I was like we just did this <laughs> we were fine um, but um, that was funny. So yeah, so the 28th distance healing, 30th shamanic journeying, the 1st of February, um, me and a Pleiadian attunement with Reverend Eva. You get more of me and an attunement. So, um, okay, cool. So I'm going to go because I wanted to keep this shorter. Um, and and yes okay so cool so I will see you soon and um, oh and it's a new moon so this one's all for expansion and yes and new and start ah, so it's perfect timing so um, okay cool all right um,